And when all is said and done, we owe every good in our lives to blood-bought grace. So that's the banner that has to fly over all of these. And when I use the word blood-bought, which is one of my favorite hyphenated adjectives, I mean it and I love it because it is built on my favorite verse in the Bible. Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Now the logic of that verse is the most beautiful logic in the universe. Since he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, us believers, because the rest of this verse doesn't count for anybody but believers. He, since he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, us the elect, us the believers, therefore he will most certainly give us absolutely everything we need to get to heaven and glorify his name. That's my favorite verse in the Bible because it relates everything to Christ crucified. As the one who purchased, blood bought everything that's good in my life or that's bad that God turns for good. Without the cross, nothing, nothing good for us. Only hell. If you didn't wake up in hell this morning, it was a good day. And it was that for one reason. He did not spare his own son. So when I say the banner flying over the telling of this story is the sweetness of blood-bought grace, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not waxing eloquent. I'm taking every word with blood-earnest seriousness. It's really sweet. It's really blood-bought. It's really grace. And it's everything good. So there's the banner. Don't forget it, because part of the story is just going to sound too good to be true. If anything good happened to Bethlehem over those years of transition, or if anything painful happened that God turned for good, it was totally undeserved by all of us at the church, especially the pastor.